Hello, my name is Franz and welcome to tutorial to Deep Scratch, our new scratch removal software. So first let's play through the scene um, where we want to solve the scratches. Here we can see we have a lot of scratches uh, with different thickness and so on. So first thing is we check in which uh, color channel the scratch is best visible. For here, I can switch over my channel view. So in red, they appear quite dark and black. In green, some appear good. This one, not so easy to find. Blue, same thing. So probably red is the best channel for detecting scratch in this scene. Okay, let's switch back to RGB. And I go now to my <clears throat> filter track, and here you have a plus symbol. And this is the symbol where we can add restoration filters to my timeline. And here I do have a repair group, and inside the repair group I have a scratch repair. This is our classical scratch removal tool, and I have the deep scratch, the deep scratch is using practically at the moment the classical scratch tool for the detection, but, you, but uses a deep learning based in painting functionalities to fix the scratch. So let's drop this down. So first I will go to a good frame where we can try our parametrization. Uh, you see the, the filter expands default to the current scene. Uh, as in every filter in Diamant, I can change the range where it should work here. And on the right panel, we have the parameters of Deep Scratch. So the most of the parameters are based for the scratch detection. And this is very similar to the lines as a vertical scratch to the scratch we have already. So how do I go forward to detect scratches? First, I turn on my show detection. Uh, now I see here I'm on the B, so I'm not on the rendered part, so I switch to A. This is the output, and that's the output now of my selection. I can toggle input output with tabulato key, and I can see, well, it finds with the default setting a, a few scratches already, but not everything and as it should be. So let's go into the parametrization. We first said they are most prominent in the uh, red channel. So I go to my advanced setting here and here I have a detection channel and set it to red. So little improvement there. So. When we look at the red channel, the scratches appear to be black or dark mostly. So what I do, I go and set, I want to do dark scratches only. So my yellow mask is appearing here now bright white in the red channel. But if I go to all channels, it will be yellow, yellowish again. The next parameter, important parameters for the scratch detection is actually sensitivity and scratch width. Let's look at the scratch width first. So most of the scratches are about this width, this width here. And I can go into my selection tool. And when I drag it, I get a, a selection. And down here, bottom right, you see when I do a selection, the width and the height of my selection rectangle. And this gives me a rough hint of 11 width. And let's go into my detection and say, OK, I'm going for 11. And you see the detection already changes. Uh, next, I would have a sensitivity parameter. Uh, sensitivity, uh, higher the value, the more scratches will be detected. So if I go up, I find a bit more scratch. So if I go down, it will find a little bit less of the scratches. So you have to balance that, that it's okay for your shot. 
And sometimes the scratch detection is not everywhere going uh, perfectly through it because the material is different. So I can enlarge the detections on different sides. So probably I'm enlarging here a little bit on both sides. And let's see how it... Okay, so now we are probably curious how the fix would look like of this. So I'm turning off the show detection and I will see a repair of the scratch. And I see here there's a little bit of left over of it, which means that my uh, enlargement was not, not f f wide enough. So I, I increase this a little bit. Oh, it brings, ah, the two scratches, what do I have in my detection are growing together probably. Uh, so I make it a bit larger, you see, uh, so that that not one scratch moves into the other one. Yeah, actually I'm quite happy with my setting. So what I could do now is go to another frame, uh, recheck, set, check my parameters, um, and I quite like it even where it is going through this structure, through the ear, through the hair, uh, around this. So it does look actually quite good. Um, well, let's now render it. So like every filter in Diamond, when you have set up your parameters, you would go to the render. Uh, one more thing is what I wanted to tell you before I render is, uh, of course, Deep Scratch, as most of the diamond filters are aware of regions of interest, so where the filter should operate on. So I could say, if I don't want to do the big scratch here, I could do a rectangle around, around this, and only that part will be uh, done, and this will be left over. Here you see the regions. If I don't like this, I could delete my region again, and I'm on the whole image. So let's render all, means render the whole timeline. Um, in this case, in the whole timeline, only this one filter is there, so it renders exactly this filter. I could also say render filter, which would exactly just render this filter and nothing else if there's something defined on the timeline. Um, so here we have different viewing modes. A, B, this is what we learned before, before, after. This is a toggling, before, after. Uh, we could do a side by side here. So on the left side is my before, and on the right side is the after. And well, let's play through it. You can see uh, on some frames there is still there are still some leftovers because probably the thickness of the scratch or they were growing together this to here. So we could go back to tweak this in our parameters or I go to a tool like X in paint, that's a exemplar based in painting or interpolate because it's only on one frame anymore. So I could use an interpolate as well. So here I could I have a line draw tool, which I use. Ah, that's not working in the side-by-side -side mode. I just see. Uh, let's go do it over here. So I can fix the small leftovers quite quickly, stepping through it. Uh, so because this were, there were quite big scratches at the end, as, uh, so, so some minor fixes by hand on some parts could be necessary. So like here or here again. Or I, I would I could also go back to, to find a different setting for this one scratch to avoid to avoid this, yeah. Uh, like here. 
maybe it should have so it's a little bit too much i think to do so i go back and show detection ah, okay so it brings this little scratch back over here that's the problem well maybe i don't change my uh, i just go into the tool track and and fix 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 this short one manually by hand okay so i can work then of course as carefully as i need to have the perfect result let's do a side by side again and see what we have achieved and when you look even here at the girl's hair part uh, this is particularly difficult to fix. So that's the strength of the deep scratch really uh, to fix parts like this or, or over here as well, where it goes to the, the fine grain structure. Okay, well, I hope you have enjoyed um, uh, the scratch tutorial and um, you liked the deep scratch uh, if you have questions or uh, you could ask uh, for at support at hsart or write an email thank you <laughs>